Hi there, Mike Brady with Generosity Wealth Management, a comprehensive, full-service financial services firm headquartered in Boulder, Colorado. You know, with today's technology, you can never tell when someone's standing in front of a, a green screen with a background, and uh, this is actually live. <laughs> this is real. The reason why I chose this spot, I'm here in northern Colorado, my cabin, which you've, uh, you know that I do, even though I'm having Zoom meetings with... Uh, existing clients and potential clients all the time, is uh, I'm so proud of this deck. Um, Felicia, my assistant, who so many of you have worked with, uh, she and her husband came out for a week vacation, and I, I, you know, I put them to work. Uh, her husband uh, builds decks and fences for a living, and this is really nice. You can see a decking board and then a half a decking board. I mean, the pattern is really beautiful, and I love it. You also see in the background, it's pretty gray and hazy. Uh, we are getting unbelievable smoke from California fires. I know uh, in the front range there, you're getting them from Western Colorado and maybe from California as well, but we are getting it big time from California and it's all hazy. Otherwise, you'd be able to see some beautiful mountains there in the background. Today, I want to talk about uh, where we are currently year to date, but I also want to talk about what lessons we can take from it. Um, you've heard me in the past talk about emotions and the things that we can control, the things we can't control, etc. And now that we've just come through a pretty difficult time, now is the time to reinforce and remember uh, how we felt before, how we felt during, and what we can take uh, going forward. First, a little bit of an update on where we are year to date. Stocks are up and bonds are up. I mean, the unmanaged stock market indexes uh, had a very hard time in February and March, and I'm being kind when I say that. Uh, every single day, it seemed like uh, it was newsworthy. Huge decline. Everybody in the world, it seemed, was freaking out. And um, it felt like at the time, when you look at the news, that they're projecting that this is uh, you know, an apocalypse that will last um, forever and ever. And if you look back at my, um, my videos from March, which I was putting out practically every other day and definitely once a week, uh, I said that I felt that it was an overreaction. Um, it was an oversold uh, situation, uh, but I had humility. I didn't know. I said, let's stay the course. Let's remember what it is that we can control, which is our portfolio, our diversification, and let's uh, control our emotions. And um, nobody, including me, uh, saw the huge um, rebound that we have seen in April, in May, in June, July, and now in August. I'm recording this on Sunday morning, August 23rd, and uh, I'm amazed at what has happened over the last four or five months to wipe away the declines that we saw in the unmanaged stock market indexes in February and in March. Um, the bonds are also up for the year. Uh, bonds, you know, many times do opposite of what bond, oh, excuse me, what stocks uh, do. And uh, they continue to do really well during the big decline. There was a fleet of bonds in many situations, but stocks now have uh, recovered. And so stocks and bonds are both um, highly positive for the year, both of them being unmanaged indexes. So what can we take from this? You already heard me talk about uh, our emotions. Uh, the importance of that. I, uh, you know, I was never in the military, okay? But what I've read is that it is normal for a soldier going into battle to fear, to feel fear, okay? That's a human emotion. As a matter of fact, we don't want soldiers who have no fear because they might do very unwise things. But the true successful soldier is one who acknowledges that they have fear but they move through it. They know how to control that particular fear. Seth Godin is someone who I think very highly of. You've heard me talk about him in the past. Um, he wrote something. One of the reasons why I like him, by the way, is uh, he articulates in a very nice way what I'm feeling and thinking, but maybe I can't articulate it as nicely as he does. And that's maybe that's why he's a, a world-famous author and a blogger, and I'm not. But he wrote something that I want to read here word for word. It's the opposite of confidence. The opposite of confidence. It's not anxiety. It's not panic. The opposite of confident is not confident. It's unsure. Being unsure can be healthy. It can help us focus on how we can make our work more likely to become the contribution we seek. But anxiety and panic 
have nothing to do with an informed understanding of how the world is unfolding. Okay, And then that, of course, leads me to the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. The reason why I bring this up is let's focus on the things in the world that we can control. We control our, um, the portfolio that we create. We control how diversified we are. We don't control certain things that we get so upset about. And some people, I would say the unsuccessful investors, are those that allow their emotions to control themselves or stay up at night. Right now, we're almost to September. September 1st, just a week away. And some investors have the same portfolio, meaning that they have the same... I'm going to move that back up, just move down. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a, a windy, uh, windy day out here. We might be at the same situation, but some people had a pleasant ride and some worried the entire time. That worry was not helpful. Worry is fear about the future, 95%, 99% of which never occurs. So let's not worry. Let's stick to our game and to the time true of diversification, having a portfolio, having the risk level that works for you then allows you to stick with the game because that's what's going to, in my opinion, allow you to be successful. This is the way I like to think of it. We're all, um, yeah, at some point, leaving our house and going to the grocery store. We're all going to get there, okay? 99.99% of us are going to get there without an accident. But some people might be so fearful of an accident that might happen. It's the, the probability is greater than zero. They're looking at the worst case scenario. They, they in, entirely uh, situate their life around the worst case scenario, obsess over the worst case scenario, and they buy a tank. Okay? They are now more secure going from their house to the Safeway with that tank. But you know what? They can't complain if it takes them if it's very expensive, takes them a long time to get there, all right, and the gas is really, you know, it eats up all the all the the gain, okay. But they're going to be secure, but it's going to take them a long time to get there. But they have positioned themselves for that very very unlikely situation that they're going to have have a catastrophic, um, you know, accident. Others might be quite unfool unwise, very foolish. They're going to drive a convertible. 100 miles an hour um, from their house to the grocery store. You know what? The truth is probably something in between. Okay? Uh, we all have seatbelts. We all have uh, airbags. Um, you got to buy the car that you feel comfortable with. But you know what? Buying the car for the unlikely and positioning, and of course the analogy is as we um, do our portfolio. Do we make a portfolio for the only the worst case scenarios? When historically, if you have a diversified portfolio, you, you doesn't mean that you're not going to have volatility. Okay, that does not mean that. But historically, it has come back over time. If you position your entire portfolio around the worst case scenarios, I just don't think that's a wise way to do it. If you allow your emotions to control your actions, short-term feelings to uh, dictate your long-term vision, your long-term plan, I don't think that's very wise. The reason why you're my client is because I hit these points over and over again. And when you might find yourself slipping, it's my job to remind you of what I've just talked about here right now. Okay? Warren Buffett uh, always says that be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Let's remember that. Okay? I hit these points over and over again. Because when things are going well, we have to remember, yeah, sometimes things go down. But we position ourselves, we create a fortress, we create the portfolio with the risk level so that you don't have to fear, you know, you don't have to make it up on the go. Okay? Other people are, are reading the news, watching the news, and the purpose of that news and that newscaster is not always, in my opinion, to 
uh, provide you with news. It's to elicit emotion from you. And if that information doesn't allow you to change that situation in any way, it's useless information as far as I'm concerned. Use information, use news that you can change, use information that is helpful to you to make better decisions, not to elicit some emotional reaction from you. Mike Brady, Generosity Wealth Management, 303-747-6455. Call me at any time, email me at any time, Mike at generositywealth.com. And uh, love to talk with you more about this. Um, I'm probably gonna stay up here. I mean, frankly, all the clients, all of you are expecting Zoom meetings. So I may as well just do them right here from my cabin. Uh, I'm gonna put some more uh, pictures of my lovely uh, deck uh, in the newsletter. So be sure to check those out as well. Mike Brady, 303-747-6455. Have a wonderful week, wonderful Labor Day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.